As we gather to worship in various places, may we be blessed by God who forms us in word, sacrament, and community. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Stephen Weber from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Cambridge, and I'm glad to have you join us for worship this day. As you likely know, on the recommendation of our ELCIC bishops, and at the request of the Chief Medical Officer of Health of Ontario, we have temporarily closed our church building and have suspended all gatherings. Therefore, I have suggested that we meet virtually as a congregation by playing this video at the time we would normally gather for Good Friday worship, Friday morning at 10 o'clock. And I know that this goes without saying, but please do watch out for one another. I'm checking in by phone as much as I'm able with many of our members. If you need assistance, please phone the church office and leave a message and I'll arrange for help. I check frequently for messages. At whatever time and location you are accessing this, thank you for doing so. It is good to be together in whatever way possible in this time of physical distancing on this special day. We turn now to the annual video from Kairos, an ecumenical coalition working to promote a more just and sustainable world. La Pietà is a famous statue in Rome. You probably know it. Mary, mother of Jesus, cradles his lifeless, crucified body in her arms. Her pain and grief are palpable. In this year, as we approach the Easter mystery in extraordinary times, I've been imagining another sculpture, one of Mother Earth cradling all her relations. Some have said this terrible moment of global pandemic is nature taking her revenge. But instead, I see Mother Earth more like Mary of the Pietà. In this sculpture, Mother Earth cradles extinct species, dried up rivers, bleached coral, koalas burned by fires. She holds on her ample lap the migrants lost at sea, children dead from bombs, human rights defenders disappeared, women murdered. She rocks in her arms, nurses and doctors who have died saving lives from the COVID-19 virus. Rather than revenge, I see pain and grief. I see comfort for all her relations, anger at injustice affecting any of her children, undocumented persons isolated and without help, refugees and homeless who cannot find shelter, indigenous peoples without access to clean water. The Easter story invites us to enter into that deep pain and loss, to lament, to cry out, to grieve injustices that lead to the untimely death of what is good, creation, human beings, embodied in Jesus's passion. We do not deny that pain, but carrying our losses with us, lament and repentance opens to another chapter, one in which hope is reborn. Not a hope that papers over the grief, but a hope that heals, animates, and pulls us forward into transformation, into resurrection. This Easter, may we comfort one another in grief. May we rage with one another against injustice. And may we come together, virtual as it may be, in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection, of a world transformed by our collective action. This Easter, let's not forget Christ risen. Let's not be afraid to hope. Wishing you a blessed Easter from all of us at Kairos. Our gathering prayer comes to us from Emily Cool Greener and Lynn Domina, and we thank them for their contribution. Let us pray. 
For those who are lost, we mourn. For all that is broken, we cry out. With those who weep, we weep. Suffering servant, hear our prayer. For all who are alone, we invite your presence. For we who are trapped inside, we ask your freedom. For those without a safe place, we beg your protection. Help of the helpless, shelter your people. For those who labor on our behalf, healing, tending, delivering, we give thanks. For those whose work has been taken, we ask provision. For those to whom the world looks for guidance, we entreat your wisdom. Shepherd, guide us through this shadow of death. For all that is obscured, we ask for light. From all our selfishness, we repent. From all our anxiety, we turn. God of love, cast out our fear. Almighty God, look with loving mercy on your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given over to the hands of sinners and to suffer death on the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. In the film Jesus of Nazareth, Nicodemus, the Pharisee who had at first met Jesus by night and talked with Jesus about being born again, is present to witness Jesus on the cross. He turns to scripture, Isaiah chapter 53, to make sense of what he is witnessing. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. He was despised and rejected of men, man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearer is dumb. Surely. He hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was abused for our iniquities. And through his wounds, we are healed. A reading from Hebrews. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. John, chapter 18. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. 
So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth! Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own? Or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, 
I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas! Now Barabbas was abandoned. John chapter 19 Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged, and the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, <laughs> Hail, King of the Jews! <laughs> and striking him on the face, Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore the one who handed me over to you was guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. 
Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write, The King of the Jews, but this man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, They will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. I don't know if you caught it in the video for the reading from Isaiah, when at the very end, after the words from Isaiah chapter 53, and through his wounds we are healed, Nicodemus added in a whisper, and born again. That echoes the conversation Nicodemus had with Jesus at the beginning of John's gospel about being born again. And that got me thinking about how Jesus' death on the cross changes us. Or as the message translates Isaiah chapter 53, it was our pains he carried, our disfigurements, all the things wrong with us, and that made us whole.
Do you feel guilty as Simon Peter did for denying Jesus? Have you ever sold out someone as Judas did? Could your discipleship best be described as sleepy as the disciples were in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus withdrew to pray? Maybe you've been healed by Jesus, as was the slave Malchus, after having his ear cut off. Perhaps you're guilty of mocking Jesus, as were the soldiers and those crucified alongside Jesus. Maybe you're feeling separation in this time of pandemic, as did the religious leaders who kept themselves separated, not going into the praetorium, lest they be defiled. Or you might be trying to figure out just who this Jesus is, as was Pilate, even attempting to stick up for Jesus, but to no avail. Perhaps you're sensing a kinship with Barabbas, who was released instead of Jesus. Maybe you're exhausted from carrying a cross, some burden, as with Simon of Cyrene, who carried Jesus' cross. I wonder if you've been feeling that you're getting the punishment you deserve, as did the penitent thief in Luke's version of the Passion. Perhaps you're huddling in grief, loneliness, or fear, as did the five at the foot of the cross. Maybe you're feeling forsaken by God, as Jesus did on the cross. Or maybe you're overcome with sorrow, as La Pieta in the Kairos video, the mother Mary holding the lifeless body of her son. On this Friday we call good, there is room for everyone, no matter what the burden or need you bring, guilt, sorrow, exhaustion, loneliness, uncertainty. This is a safe place to hold everything in life that is painful, tragic, confusing, or unbearable. God doesn't give us the cross. God gives us the resurrection. The cross was the result of human brokenness in action. But God is willing to go to Golgotha to teach us how to live, to show us that death does not need to have the final word, that we can become something new. And so on this Friday we call good. There is room for everyone. As the prophet Isaiah explained, it was our pains he carried, our disfigurements, all the things wrong with us, and that made us whole. Jesus' death changes us. Jesus takes us, heals us, and makes us whole. That's why we call this Friday good. The prayers this day are again from Pastor Rick Price of Lunenburg Lutheran Parish in Nova Scotia, and we thank him for his contribution. Let us pray for the church throughout the world. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ. By your Holy Spirit, guide the church and gather it throughout the world. Help it to persevere in faith, proclaim your name, and bring the good news of salvation in Christ to all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God. Almighty and eternal God, you created humanity so that all may long to know you and find peace in you. Grant that all may recognize the signs of your love and grace in the world and in lives of Christians. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for God's creation.
Almighty and eternal God, you are the creator of a magnificent universe. Hold all the worlds in the arms of your care and bring all things to fulfillment in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those in need. Almighty and eternal God, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety to travelers, free those unjustly deprived of liberty, and deliver your world from falsehood, hunger, and disease. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Finally, let us pray for all those things which the Lord would have us ask. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and we praise your holy resurrection. For by your cross, joy has come into the world. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and we praise your holy resurrection. For by your cross, joy has come into the world. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God give us blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and we praise your holy resurrection. For by your cross, joy has come into the world. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. 